Uh, so hello there. Welcome back with another show from my photography. Uh, you're listening to Stephen. And today, as you can see, if you're following the, uh, the YouTube version of this podcast, I'm joined by Emily Lowry, our wonderful pro wedding photographer. How are you doing, Emily? Hi, I'm, I'm very well, thank you. And very happy to be here. I'm a little bit busy with my editing workflow now that weddings are still kicking off. But yeah, yeah. it's been, been a good, good time and I'm happy to be here. So are we still in wedding season? Where are we now? Kind of mid-October, early October. Is it still wedding season? It's dying down now. On a normal year, it would be wrapping up until sort of the new year dates. But with a lot of like rescheduling that's going on, it, it is sort of <laughs> pushing on to a year-round job this year. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose it's, it's making up, isn't it, for the past, what, like 18 months or so when things have been, yeah. well, literally kind of frozen, really. Is Have you got a lot of... Um, rebookings of a lot of your clients come back to you now re- re- rearranged yeah a heck of a lot um, and I used to have a rule where I would never do more than two weddings back to back so like a Saturday or a Sunday or a Friday and a Saturday and now this year it's just like out the window <laughs> Thursday Friday Saturday Tuesday Wednesday because people are doing it in the week as well now yeah so, yeah it's, it's probably it's a lot good. cheaper I imagine but also they're just trying to get a date aren't they if they exactly had to postpone everything you know by about you know 18 months or so you think at that point it's like I just want to get do down it. married <laughs> I yeah. just want it over, over and done <laughs> all the emotion and the love has gone out of it. it's like right just get it done <laughs> <That's so true. laughs> oh bless but I, I imagine a lot of people are kind of quite grateful that, that it's you know you've been available still to to kind of come and do it have any kind of wedding photographers kind of just given up the ghost like over the past 18 months that just given up the business so many uh really? so so many have been really disheartened with it uh, because it has been a lot of admin and a lot of stress particularly those wedding photographers that do it over like quantity rather than quality so if, if you aim yeah. for like 50 weddings a year and then suddenly you have to do 100 because you missed a year yeah that's a very different ball game that's and it's massive. been super heartbreaking to see a lot of people that i really really look up to having to get like jobs in in supermarkets and things to sort of make ends meet over the last yeah. year or so uh, but I'm hoping that people will come back to it and, and it'll be stronger than ever because there's always going to be a demand for people to get married well yeah I imagine as you say you know it's been kind of full on with people rearranging them some people may have like with holidays pushed it back until like 2022 thinking you know everything's just crazy let's just give us another couple of months maybe another six months and we'll go again so yeah I think there's maybe a, a big opportunity there for, for wedding photographers to jump in on but um, it's not wedding photography per se that we're chatting about today is it we are on a, a slightly different topic um, but still I think you're the absolute perfect person to be chatting about because um we're chatting about women in photography and I suppose that the the crux of our conversation is discussing the stereotypes isn't it I think that's that's kind of the main thing that we we wanted to kind of delve into because there are kind of quite a few stereotypes given that photography um maybe more you know years ago um it was a male dominated industry um you know just that the hobby in itself was maybe more male dominated but is it still do you think so no, I, I think um, f- photography is one of these things, you're right in saying it was very heavily uh, a male sort of industry, but I think you don't really need to be a man or a woman to pick up a camera and, and, and know how to use it. It's it's very much even, particularly in, in the industries that I'm in, sort of mm. weddings, families and things like that. But also across the board, like outside of weddings, my favourite thing is like astrophotography and landscape photography, which you might think is more of a masculine sort of style of photography if, mm. if that's even a thing um <laughs> but yeah I, I think um women across the board are doing all different kinds of photography yeah and I, I think that's a really good point that you've made already I know we were going to get into about the the misconceptions uh, uh, as well as to like you said you know a lot of women do I'll say a lot of women you know there's, there's quite a few women photographers that that lean to certain areas of photography but it's not exclusive um and I think it's it's good to empower and kind of make people more knowledgeable that you know there's there's crossovers there you literally are limited by nothing you know certainly gender religion race whatever it may be photography is kind of just open season isn't it for everybody um but unfortunately there are still those moments where people i say treat others differently if that's the right type of thing you know i've i've read stories online and 
heard experiences from other female photographers who have who found it that little bit harder whether it's just kind of getting a job as a photographer or even just kind of getting unpaid work or just getting their work noticed and I, I think especially well yeah in, in this day and age, definitely, you know, equality is, is vastly important, but this is why I've, I've kind of got some questions to put to you to hopefully kind of um, just make, make things a little bit more of a reality for people that maybe didn't know, um, you know, if there's female photographers out there who are looking to kind of break into the industry a little bit more, get a bit more noticed, um, and just to kind of help them kind of feel a little bit more confident that, you know, I think times are changing, aren't they? And, and you know, women are being just as accepted as men hopefully yeah we hope yes yes indeed well this is it. i said this is why i kind of put a, a few little talking points together a few little questions and if anyone's listening um you know whether you be male female wherever um then then get in touch with us you know i think it's really really important that that discussions like this are had um not just with the two of us not just with me and emily but on, on, on a wider plane as well so you know if anybody wants to get involved um you can always drop us a message um, will always be links uh, in the descriptions for these podcasts and wherever you find us on social media. But starting off, I just wanted to get a kind of a, a wider viewpoint from you, Em, as to kind of how you see photography. Now, kind of putting your business and your professional aspects to one side, what do you enjoy about kind of putting a camera up to your face and taking a photo? Oh, that's a good question. I think <clears throat> for me, my photography is is really quite personal whether that's um documenting sort of recently it's documenting sort of the holidays and the hikes that I've been doing um my wedding photography business is called make life memorable and that is from my own sort of standpoint of I want to remember everything I want to document what I'm doing so for me when I put the camera to my eye is what memory do I want to preserve and what story do I want to tell I think that's yeah. where I'm going and that, that's nice because the reason I asked it, because that's that I would give a very similar answer. So I wanted to dispel the fact that, you know, even at this early point, men and women don't have a difference uh, necessarily in why they enjoy photography. It's, it's not as if, um, you know, women only want to do it for one purpose and men, it's a completely different one as well. So hopefully from that answer, there'll be other people out there going, yeah, I, I, that's why I do photography. I want to make life memorable quite literally you know yeah, <laughs> as a tagline yeah. <laughs> indeed as well great name for a business and um, because yeah you know life is so short so fleeting I'm sure we've all experienced this instances of that so I think it's it's important that we all share a very common reason as to as to why we actually do this hobby because nobody goes in to photography to make money nobody looks at it and goes right if I'm going to be a millionaire I'm going to take photographs. That's the quickest way to go. Um, well, there are a lot of easier ways. <laughs> <laughs> is there? I don't, you need to tell me about them, man. <laughs> I'm in the wrong job if I'm pursuing that. Uh, but yeah, it, you, you're right. It's 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 thinking much more intrinsic. It's more of an emotional thing, isn't it? That I think draws people in. That they, as you say, they want to preserve legacies. It's like some sort of modern day Greek god. We always want to have our names remembered, but you know, in in the kind of um, in the format of an image, really. But I mean, why, why do you think, kind of coming, I suppose, a bit more onto topic, why do you think women are maybe seen and treated differently in some instances um, as photographers, you know, compared to male photographers? I think it, it's, it's just a societal thing, and it's not only to photography. I mean, my other hobby is playing the drums, and my goodness is that do you, you get some funny looks when you rock up and, and sit behind a drum kit when you're at a gig. Yeah. I once did a gig where we were sharing a drum kit with another band, and on the drum head was like a No Girls Allowed like, oh, no. emblem, and I just got on there and went, ah! <laughs> That's literally just... what you were aimed for, <laughs> to yeah. keep smacking. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I get the feeling that like it's very wrong, and it needs to... to sort of be weaned out of society but I think people look at a man as a professional when he holds a camera mm -hmm. and then when it, it's a woman it might be oh isn't that nice she's got a hobby oh isn't that nice shall I take photos of flowers and babies mm -hmm. and it's not always like you get taken as seriously yeah uh, and I, it is just a societal thing across many different aspects that are traditionally a gendered sort of role I think yeah and, and it's interesting because if I sit here now and think kind of famous photographers regardless of uh, you know sex etc but if you think kind of on trend who's a very very popular photographer you know in the past 10 years or so the first name that comes to mind is Annie Leibovitz you know, the, yeah. her, her iconic status the people that she's worked with um, and the work that she produces 
you know, uh, so many people are big fans of her that um, that you think, yeah, you don't even realize, you know, that at the top of the tree these days is, you know, it's a female photographer. And I think there's probably, there's probably many more. I'm just picking out one there, but it's the first one that springs to mind. So it's it really is in a case that you're capped by your sex or, or any other kind of uh, quality. Um, you, you can literally be the most famous photographer that there is these days, you know, regardless in a sense of, you know, whether you're a man or a woman. But I mean, when it kind of comes to, you know, the authority and the preconceptions that we were talking about, um, is it something that ever kind of stays on your mind? Like, you know, that you had that incident, incident with the, the drumming, when it kind of maybe applies to your photography, do you ever feel, I want to say secondary, um, do you, or do you ever treat it that way, um, whether it's with other photographers or even with clients or venues or anything like that as well? Have you had any instances of inequality? I, I think if you asked that to any female photographer, they would be able to throw a dozen examples at you. Uh, I've got so many that come to mind that I can't Go on then. <laughs> most, most recently, and I'm not doing this to sort of stand on a pedestal and rant about this stuff. It's just opening the conversation. I find yeah. it quite interesting. I was in the Brecon Beacons in Wales filming the astrophotography course for Ooh, iPhotography. Ooh, plug, 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 <laughs> which is a very technical type of photography are not traditionally female fronted so I'm really mm. like appreciative that, that I was chosen to be the presenter for this one I think it's really cool um, we were staying I was staying with my husband in sort of a little um, like a glamping thing because we needed to be where there was no light pollution mm. and the guy that owned it was coming over and he was asking what we were doing and I, I was like, I'm, I'm doing an astrophotography course I'm, I'm filming uh, and, and shooting the stars and he just kind of started talking to my husband as though like I was doing it for just fun and not for like uh, being paid, you know. Yeah. He was sort of assuming like, oh God, so what, what do you have to do, husband, to fund this woman's frivolous oh, hobby? <laughs> and seriously. I was just like, dude, I'm I'm paying to be here with my job. <laughs> yeah, that's it. You've been selected. You know, we we've we've chosen you for re- and you obviously front a lot of courses that, that I photography have produced over the past um couple of years. Um yeah, it's, it's kind of crazy in one sense because I know how good you are, but it's it also it does. And I think this is a reality that needs to be spoken about. Um, that that you know you you have been kind of treated, and as you said, you, there's more examples that you can probably give. Um, that people, I don't know whether it's just not taking you seriously or you're seeing it as a, a hobby. Um, because yeah. this is you full time, twenty four seven, isn't it? It's not as yeah. if you you work kind of in a shop or a factory or anything like this. This is your life, and it has been for how long? So full time for around six years, but I've been doing it part time professionally for 10 years. So my whole income comes from my camera, whether that's photography, videography or any digital assets or or anything that I sell around that. And I do often wonder if that guy had come over and it was my husband who was behind the camera and he said the same thing. Mm he would probably have gone, oh, yeah, that's a really cool job. Amazing. You get to be an astrophotographer and get paid. Yeah. <laughs> it, it may have been a completely different narrative. It would have been really yeah, interesting to do like a kind of a, a double test on it, really, is yeah. just like how people would, would, would kind of change the conversation. I mean, do you find that people ever overlook you in the conversation? They just don't discuss photography with you in a technical sense, because I know you're kind of quite technically minded, um, you know, with a, you you really, really like your your kind of gadgets, your accessories, your cameras, et cetera. It's one thing you're very, very passionate about. Do you find that guys, you know, miss that conversation with you and talk about other things or they just go off and ignore you completely? And, And same with women as well. Do other women, do they embark in technical conversations with you about photography? Uh, because I do photography and videography when I'm um, doing wedding stuff sometimes I'll be working alongside a female videographer or a female photographer or or a male uh, counterpart and the conversations that we have over over dinner is often incredibly technical Mm. like we're talking about you know maybe getting tilt shift lenses for our videography (laughs) and and you know what sort of ND filters we might want to do for the couple portraits later because the sun's come out and it's not sat the you know picking daisies and talking about (laughs) emotion it's about the technical aspects of of the lighting and and what kelvin we need because we're in a horrible old venue and all the old lighting is making the video flicker and everyone's skin tones are yellow (laughs) so yeah it's it's very technical and it's it's often a lot of um 
war stories over those sort of breaks. You know, I, I've worked in the past with a lot of assistants who wanted to sort of shadow me and some of them have been male. And then sometimes when you get to the venue, the eye contact goes to the dude <laughs> and I'm like hi it's me I'm the photographer can I please have this conversation and the guys are just like bewildered <laughs> because oh they're just here God. to help me <laughs> do you need to have like a t-shirt that literally says I am the photographer, photographer. <laughs> yeah I think I, sh- I think we should sell them Stephen <laughs> that's yeah it's people just just know for sure and maybe we can get your husband once I am I am the photographer's husband or something like that <laughs> yeah, so that I'm, everybody I'm... knows their places <laughs> yeah I don't know anything about photography please don't a few um oh god it must be two years ago now with everything that's gone on i was really uh, privileged to be part of a panel at the photography show uh, for the women who film and photo and it was such a refreshing atmosphere to be primarily we were on stage with maybe eight other wonderful talented women and a lot of the audience were female and it was such an encouraging space where Oh, hello. That was a beat. It's such an encouraging space where anyone wanted to ask questions and, and these female um, people in the audience were saying, you know, how do you get started? How do you combat this? And mm. it was such a, a nice feeling of camaraderie. Yeah, uh, it was a great experience to be part of that panel. What what kind of just on that t- point then, what kind of questions were they bringing up? What things were they were they finding issues with of like breaking into the industry or anything like that? Was there a common a common theme in any way? I think a lot of it is about being perceived as an authority. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, th- I think you need, if, if you don't have the portfolio to back you up, all you have is your branding and your words and maybe your, your website. And, and if you are trying to break into the industry without the portfolio to sort of back up what you're saying, I do think it's a little bit more of a, 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 a roadblock mm-hmm. for a woman to be, be taken seriously sometimes, which is such a shame because yeah. most of the, the most talented people, there's very talented men, obviously, but there's so much talent in the photography industry for both genders and all genders. Yeah, It shouldn't be a gendered conversation at all. No, no. And, and that's <laughs> the irony. I mean, it, you can almost say that, you know, it, we wish we weren't having this this kind of podcast in a sense, but I know those differences, like you've already kind of pointed out, they they do exist. Um, but I mean, has it got any easier in a way? Maybe kind of going back six, ten years for you, did you kind of get more issues and roadblocks than you do now being female uh, photographer? I'd say the the gender preconception is about the same as ever unfortunately but mm. one thing has happened is I've got a little bit older mm-hmm. I I, uh, I, I've cur- I was cursed and I'm cursed maybe with a very <laughs> childish face so being a female with a young looking face 10 years ago was like really bad <laughs> this little squeaky voice like please take me seriously <laughs> But now I've got a little bit older and a little bit more confident. And now I just, I can shout as good as a dude. People can, people need to like, <laughs> listen, hear me roar. I, I think that's it, you know, stamping your own authority on the situation, especially weddings, because regardless of sex, you, you have to do that. It's it's a crowd control thing, really. So yeah, even though Emily kind of, you know, looks like she's in an early 30s, she's actually 56, which is... Uh... <laughs> I'm joking. I'm 110. I'm like Keanu Reeves. I just don't age. <laughs> It's so true, isn't it? You, you know, I mean, I, I saw the oh, totally off topic now. Um, the trailer for um, the new Matrix, and yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate they can do like CGI and whatnot, make people a bit more youthful, but it doesn't seem to change that much, does he? No, he's amazing. He's it's a bit amazing. like Tom Cruise, isn't it? He, he yeah. just he's literally. I mean, I don't know that may down, be down to surgery or something like that, but those guys just never seem to alter at all. It's very, very bizarre. So- one thing that I think we discussed um, off air was about this preconception that women's photography tends to be emotional and men's more technical. Yes. Which is a stereotype which I think is ridiculous. <laughs> Because isn't all photography supposed to be emotional? Mm. And isn't all photography at some level technical? Oh yeah. I yeah. you've got to learn I think you've got to learn the technical aspects most definitely. Um I suppose it's interesting. And this was kind of let's say fueled from a conversation that I had on a previous con- um podcast with um 
landscape photographer, Chris Sale. And he was talking about how um, his client base is a little bit different in respects to um, how they approach their workshops. So a lot of the ladies um, that he kind of teaches or works alongside with, um, they talk, their conversation was a little bit more about composition. Whereas uh, a few of the gentlemen, again, it's not like a 50, 50 split that, you know, it was quite clear that only the ladies did that and only the men did that, but it was something enough for him to notice, I guess, uh, for him to bring it up that the guys um, were more interested about gear. And straight away, and I, I thought this is this is why you're kind of a very, very good person to talk about because you really love gear, you know, I yet do. you're not a male photographer, yes. you know. So it, it's, it's though those, you know, those lines may exist in some people, it's not exclusive and there is crossover immensely and you shouldn't feel that you're being bound by those parameters, should you? No, I think <clears throat> photography can be very technical and you can get really lost in all the gear and the gadgets which I really mm. love I love the idea that you could purchase a new lens or a new accessory and then it'll open up a creative avenue for you but there are just as many people that are rocking the same 50 mil prime lens that they bought 10 years ago yeah. and they're more interested in getting out there and taking the images mm -hmm. and I think there's there's merits to both and you don't have to be interested in gear to do that I, yeah. I would argue you probably need to be interested in composition to be a good photographer yeah um, but yeah, it is, it is, it's very interesting. Uh, I've, I've seen that with photographers, I suppose, because it is sometimes, you know, we'll get our gear out with the guys and look at all the different stuff we've got. And then with the women, it's like, oh, look at the composition I got this morning with this, mm -hmm. this, and this. And yeah, that is an interesting point, but there is definitely crossover. There's, there's definitely, yeah. And I, again, slightly away from photography, um, even prior to this kind of whole conversation start, and I saw a video and maybe it was on TikTok or I don't know where it was. Um, but the guy was talking about, how just intrinsically, you know, just as a, you know, a sex, males were more interested in things, you know, objects, whatever it may be. Um, and this is potentially why you see more men in certain careers, certain types of careers, be it like engineering or whatever. Uh, and women were more caring, you know, they were, they were much more thoughtful, etc. cetera. Um, so it kind of, it, that kind of, it, it, I wanted to kind of see if it was true in photography. And then with, you had this kind of conversation on the podcast with Chris. Uh, um, well, it wasn't even the direct conversation we were having, but something else we were talking about, about projects and it, it went on to something else. And I just wondered, you know, there's this crossovers all over the place, really, that these types of kind of, they are stereotypes in a way, really. They are kind of people saying, you know, that people belong here, these people belong there, et cetera, as well. Because in the same sense that you were saying about how you're very, very interested in gear and, and products, I hate that. I really, Chris really hates do. It as well. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Like, because I was very lucky enough to film the landscape course with him. I remember him saying that he has a relatively old camera mm. and he just wants to get out and, and, and take the shots. And his work is very tranquil and he wants yes. it to be very calming and he likes overcast days. So he, he's, we would say he's a male photographer who isn't too fussed about gear and yeah. more about the emotion of his photography. Mm -hmm. Whereas I, I, I am very much into the emotion and the story, but I'm a big gearhead. Yeah, and you, <laughs> and you then, kind of sit on both sides. Yeah, and then you just outright hate. Oh, I hate, I hate. Stuff. I wrote a blog about it a while ago, and I got a number of comments from people saying, actually, yeah, you know, I don't like talking about you know, sitting here talking about Bayer filters uh, and, and, you know, and the, the construction, the groups and elements of a lens. I was like, I, I don't need to know about it. And just, I know what a camera can do. I just want to be able to take, like you said, almost circling back to start, images that make life memorable, that, that either kind of show my journey through life or show the story of a situation or a location or a person. And, and that's ultimately what it all boils down to, isn't it? Is It's yeah. just kind of capturing something that can live forever for other generations and if you compare it to other hobbies you know if you were baking cakes i don't i don't think people would talk endlessly about the spatulas that they use <laughs> or if you're a painter i don't suppose it would be you know which brush is your favorite brush top yeah. 10 brushes i bet that exists well i i, I was gonna say i bet you there is a very small yeah. niche group of people that do love that <laughs> but at the end of the day whether you're a photographer or a baker or whatever you are in it for the final result you're in it to yeah. see that final photograph that you saw in your head and you're trying to use these tools to recreate what you see in your head yeah. and they are just a means to an end yeah. so 
we're yeah, all doing it for the same purpose i, I think yeah. you're totally right i mean i mean be before we wrap up i i just wanted to kind of if there is um you know uh, um, certain individuals that are there kind of certain women photographers that i know we talked about annie lepowitz but i think there's 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 more that we can kind of showcase than just her any particular female photographers that that you really love their work you know any anyone particular that we can kind of give a bit of a shout out to and get people to check out uh, and understand you know the the good work that everyone can do yeah I, i've been um because of circumstances i've been really into exploring the uk recently and trying to be a little bit more outdoorsy and and doing sort of landscape travel uh, documentary kind of photography so i've been i've been looking at people like that and there is one woman who blows my mind because one thing i really struggle with is seascapes right mm. i just find them so uninspiring i just think you've got this one <laughs> shot and that's it. You've got the waves coming in. You might have a, a, a foreground interest and then ah, I'm terrible at it. This lady, Rachel Talibart, is phenomenal at seascapes. Her whole portfolio is seascapes and the colours that she brings out. I think she's from the UK as well. The yeah. colours that she brings out, they're like paintings. And I just look at her work and go, she's made a whole portfolio on this one tiny niche of landscape photography and just completely made it her own and I just wish I could find something like that for myself and just go right today I'm just taking photographs of mushrooms <laughs> and just like make you know <laughs> you know I just I think people that can do one thing exceptionally well really yeah. appeals to me so Rachel Talibart she's amazing check out her Instagram there we go yeah I'll, I'll, I'll make sure we um ta Talibart so yes. T-A-L-A-B-A-R-T T-A-L- I-B-A-R-T. Brilliant. Just to be I may have also pronounced that wrong. Right. I don't know. Well, I will dig cool. out her, uh, her Instagram and I will stick it in the link to the description of this uh, of this podcast. So if anybody wants to kind of check her out, I'm also going to have a look on my phone now and just try and see if I can... The uh... colours, Stephen, the colours of the water and the long exposures that she uses. It must be a very technical way to do it because seascapes are very tricky anyway with the elements and the long exposures and, and getting oh, yeah. everything right. But isn't she so cool? I want oh, those my... on my wall. I've seen that. That recent image is posted a couple of days ago. Um called surf study the fourth um i feel like i've seen that before maybe She's you know super. i'm familiar with her work but yeah i've got a few people that I actually know already that, that follow her on on instagram so but yeah she's very consistent uh, so looking across her work so yeah definitely if i uh you know if anybody's watching the the video version of this on uh on uh on old YouTube, then if I can try and kind of hold that up, there you go, Rachel Talabart. There you go, check and her I'm out. I'm sorry if I pronounced your name wrong, Rachel, but you are super cool. I would have said, yeah, Talabart, yeah. Yeah. It's a reads right as well. Honestly, really, really cool shots. Brilliant. There we go. So hopefully it, it's been a, a helpful conversation for, for people to kind of say, understand, appreciate, and, you know, the, 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 the hurdles that you've gone through and you still face to some degree. Because you were talking about the, the incident where you had on the Astro course, and that was fairly recently wasn't there it is. I, I just think it's always going to happen and, mm. and uh, unless something drastically changes in society I do think it's something that it's yeah. just a little thing for, for, for female photographers that they'll always have to struggle against but it's it's a small thing you can laugh it off as long as you have confidence in your own work and mm. I, I I'm the kind of person where I'm very quiet but if I have the proof that what I'm saying is good like I'm a decent photographer for instance or I'm good at astrophotography or whatever then yeah. I'm, I've got confidence in myself and as long as you've got something to back up what you're saying then yeah. everything's fine just laugh it off and just think we are more enlightened than whoever is giving you crap that that's it and this is what they do like in um in football um in a way that the crowds give abuse to players and whatnot and, and the way that they kind of go back at them is they go and score so i yeah. say proof is in the pudding you know you, you keep going with what you know and what you believe then you'll 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 get all the um all the plaudits that you fully deserve so Absolutely. so thank you so much for that emily um i think we kind of kept it fairly kind of light and uplifting for such kind of a, <laughs> a deep conversation and hopefully anyone that's listening if they've got any further points to add in um you know about experiences and, and kind of you know how you see the opposite sex you know how you see your own sex in in, in photography etc um then get in touch it'd be lovely to kind of potentially kind of carry this conversation on we can kind of um 
talk about it a little bit more you can always email us if you want to know uh, sorry if you've got any kind of thoughts but you can find us on instagram facebook youtube all those are different places and again if you've been enjoying the podcast then please follow subscribe um we love kind of new followers and people getting in touch telling us that they enjoy it so it's really really nice to know that there's a listenership out there um so yeah you can kind of keep checking out for more and myself and emily will catch you in another episode soon won't we Yes, indeed. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you very much. Bye-bye now. Bye.